I've seen it over and over and over again. What coding does for, for girls is just mind-blowing. That's Baratang Mia, who created the organization Girl Hype in 2003 to empower disadvantaged young women and girls to connect to the digital world and learn how to code. I'm Michael Kaloki. This week on Africa Science Focus, get ready to learn the language of computers as our reporter Halima Athumani in Uganda links up with Baratang Mia in South Africa. First, let's trip computer coding down to the circuit boards. Coding is a, is a language, but this language is not a language spoken by human beings. It's a language spoken by a computer. Now, with computers, if you want to go to a computer and create platforms, let's say you want to build a website, you want to create an app, and you want to solve something using technology, what you will do first is to learn a language that a computer will understand. So there's a, there's a communication happening between me, a computer, and the end product. What other people see on the other side is what I've built with my code. The computer interpreted and make it easy for people like who are reading the computer to read what I've written so that the computer can transfer it. I'm in South Africa. At the moment, you and I are using, what are we using now? We're using Zoom, not to promote Zoom, but we're using Zoom to talk. Now, whoever coded Zoom, what you and I are seeing is not a code. They wrote a language that only a computer can understand. And that language comes either in Python, JavaScript, CSS, when we say coding languages, we mean CSS. Depending on what you are coding for, you'll speak that language with a computer. Coding is not an easy language to learn, just like English is not an easy language to learn if it's not your first language. But people persist because they look at it as a language. They persist. Even if it takes them two, three, four years, they will over and over learn those syntax and understand it. But learning how to bootstrap, how to make sure that it comes right, it's one of the most beautiful things I've ever experienced. It's like, like, <laughs> literally, it's the most beautiful. Is it like me coming from Uganda and trying to learn your mother tongue? <laughs> Something like that, maybe? Yes, it's exactly like that. It's like you coming from Uganda, le- trying to learn my mother tongue and trying to communicate with me. So what we're doing with coding is you learning how to talk to computers in the language they understand, so that you can build things, products. You can build apps, you can build your own Facebook that somebody out there can be able to communicate through. And now you're reaching now. What happens, the difference is the magnitude and the scalability of technologies that once you've learned how to speak to me, you can speak to everyone in the world who speaks my language. Computers are like that, but in a different scale. You don't speak to one person. Thousands of people can all of a sudden access one platform that you've built. Could, could you share maybe a story about one of your graduates, someone who joined the Girl High program and has gone on to a career in technology? Someone you're proud of. I'm sure you have many, but one particular one that stands out. <laughs> I, I, I have extremely many, but um, one who stand out to me is a girl from Kailicha. She, she comes from poverty. Let me put it that way. Simplicity is poverty, poverty, poverty. The school that she goes to, they give them lunch. The school that she goes to make sure that she eats. Um, it's, it's one of the amazing story because she was one of the most intelligent child in her class and even amongst the boys. And she was with us for three years. She learned HTML, CSS, went on to Python, Java, and Java became her best language. She went straight from high school at age 18 to work for Microsoft as an intern. Within two years, she was living in one of the highly, the high suburbs of South Africa, which is like Centen. Now moving from poverty to the richest, the top 2% richest people of South Africa, living in that area, seeing her changing her whole family's life was mind blowing. What can coding offer girls and women that other fields can't offer? You learn problem solving because every day of your life, you're dealing with 
problems. You, what we give them when they code is problems to solve. And it builds their tenacity and their resilience because you are looking at this coding and you're bootstrapping. It's not working and you know that you coded it right and damn, it's not working. A moment it works. It gives this pleasure that nobody can explain. It's like exhilarating feeling. And that, and at the same time, you learn how to deal with people because you cannot code on your own. 90% of the time you pass a code and you've got other teams, someone who's very good at UX helping you, someone who's very good with the back end helping you to come up with the final product. So I know that when the girls enter the space, they're used to looking at problems in a different way. But once they learned how to program and set content and pre-set those um, workflows and understand how content should be structured, you can't get that anywhere. Girl Hype offers a range of programs to girls across South Africa. Schools, community groups and even libraries can set up a code club for girls between the 6th and 12th grades. We'll have details on where to find more information later in the show. They also run an online entrepreneurship program called Technovation, which supports young female coders to build mobile apps that address challenges in their communities. You've, you've shown us how tech supports or grows these girls, but how do the girls give back to technology? I think what they give back to technology is they are the living they, they live in these environments where the problems exist. And problems create opportunities. So somebody's looking out there and saying, these are, there's a lot of issues in Africa. I'm looking at it and feeling like, wow, so many opportunities in Africa and they need to be solved because we are moving. We are now going to a very digital world. We can't move away from saying the world is not going to be digital. It, COVID has fast-tracked that altogether. Now we are at the point where now everybody is solving problems. So for these girls, they're bringing a different mindset to the table. If you want to solve someone's problem, I, I think President Mandela said it said, if you want someone to connect with you, speak in their mother tongue. These girls, what they bring into technology, especially AI, is the human element of AI. We can't have one voice, one mentality, one structure of thinking which is very different, unique. At the moment, it's mainly men in Silicon Valley or first world countries deciding how AI is going to be. Imagine if an, an African girl was to decide what issues are going to be covered. African woman is going to be part of that technology. While it's estimated that 30% of researchers in sub-Saharan Africa are women, only 20% of the continent's coders are female. Baratang remembers what it was like to venture into this emerging field. When I started my work, and that's something I've, I've learned over a period of time, when I started my work, the internet was very white, male-dominated. And that was my biggest challenge. And that was something I was driving to get more women, more women. But now when we speak like that, it's important that we become human. There's intersectional issues that comes out of me just speaking about women because then it becomes a heterosexual issue of men against women whilst we're forgetting that the world has changed and so many issues are coming up. So when I speak about women, I do not forget about the word gender. People ask me about women, but I'm learning. I tend to use the word gender and sexuality <laughs> better instead of women. The technology industry is expanding fast, but it lacks diversity and inclusion. For example, in the United Kingdom, four in every five members of the tech workforce are men and they are mostly white. Barateng tells Halima there's an opportunity to change this. There's a huge gap of women in technology and girls tend to not find role models, uh, sponsors and people who can, they can really look up to, to be in the industry. And so it's very important for us to close the gender gap because of the needs for diversity. 
and there's a lot of jobs in this space like 80 percent of the jobs that are coming up now is in tech and every job is now using technology so uh, it's important for women to be part of the digital economy Mm -hmm. why do you think women are still lagging behind when it comes to technology is it a lack of opportunities what what is not what's what's not favoring them being in technology it's lack of um role models one and lack of opportunities and uh, women being overlooked when it comes to job opportunities still attracts the requirements that in the past were still attracting young men if i were to be blunt and and not because women couldn't do it or not because young women couldn't do it there's so many issues which are like social issues and then we go to technical issues that are really tech industry on its own the culture it's it was still very male dominated i remember when i entered the space it you can feel alone and it becomes very difficult to incorporate yourself into the space if you don't have a role model i mean i know this is not really part of the questions but now that you mentioned the fact that you felt alone how was that like how was that space like feeling like you're the only woman in a space with so many men to, to be fair and honest, uh, the men, when I, when I got into the space, it was too early, it was 2003. At the time, even though it was so white and male-dominated, they were literally very welcoming and looking for women to work with. So it's, what makes it alone is not how the men treat you. Because the men are welcoming, they're thinking they're doing you a favor, they're coaching you. They, I, I mean, I, I, I'm where I am today, thanks to those men that I found in the space. But what they don't understand is that my challenges are different from them. My issues are different from theirs. So when I didn't sleep because my baby was crying the whole night, it's not something I go to back to work and discuss. They come back to work and they discuss other issues. I didn't have anyone at work that I could relate to because and even in meetings when people are and you know uh, work is done socially also when we go to parties and people are networking the events they go to the golfing they what they weren't attractive to me so i would only meet people for work reasons and then walk away so i wasn't part of the clan i wasn't part of the discussion the laughing the jokes i felt like okay so what because I was a young mom and for them it was fine because they are having their ball of their lifetime. So part of me felt like I'm in the right growing space. But another part of me felt like I needed someone. Because workplace you should also find we spend half of our time there. So we need people that you can talk to about anything in life not be restricted to only talking about the product or talking about performance and and even when you are facing challenges they don't understand so if i'm i get to work and i have the worst um, periods in my life i can't go to another man and say oh this and and they relate It, it was things that i kept to myself and work was not enjoyable but i made it fun Because the people went horrible. The men aren't horrible in the workplace. It's just that they wasn't relatable to what I was going through as a person in life. Barateng is also moving into the policy world, where she's advocating for rights and gender inclusion. If you want to see out what Barateng Mia has planned for the tech world and to find links to Girl High programs, go to the SciDevNet website, www. Dot s c i d e v dot net and you can subscribe and catch up on all africa science focus episodes on your favorite podcast app today's show was produced by harrison lewis and edited by fiona broom with reporting from halima athumani africa science focus is produced by sidevnet and distributed in association with your local radio station I'm Michael Kaloki. See you again next week. This program was funded by the Carnegie Corporation of New York.